So now let's look at what happens when we do Laplace transforms to a PDE. So typically we do it um, in the T variable uh, because their Laplace transforms are well adapted to initial value problems. But um, you can actually do it for either. So if we've got a function of x and t, we'll take the Laplace transform to be uh, the function u x x x s. So this is we just have the same definition. So we've got e to the minus s t as our integral kernel for this integral uh, transformation, this integral operator. And then we take u x t d t as our argument. Um, so now this means that if we do the Laplace transform of a time derivative, then we have um, d d t u x t d t, and we can um, move this derivative to the other argument using integration by parts. And we only have to pay with a boundary term and a minus sign. And so then the derivative of e to the minus st is negative s e to the minus st. And now we've got the derivative off the u. Um, and so one of these boundary terms uh, is going to die, namely the one at infinity, because um, we require our function u to be of exponential order. So e to the minus st will kill it off. And then we're left with um, minus u x0 and s times u xs. So just like before, um, we see that uh, the derivative in u over here is converted into this uh, factor of s on the transform side. However, if we do the Laplace transform of an x derivative, then um, so we've got e to the minus st ddx ux t dt. Then since um, uh, the ddx uh, has nothing to do with t's, we can take it out in front of the e. And in fact, we can take it out in front of the integral altogether. Um, <coughs> and so then this is uh, ddx of the Laplace transform. So um, derivatives on the x of uh, on little u uh, become derivatives with respect to x on big u. So those just roll right on through. Okay, so how do we use this to uh, solve, say, the heat equation. Let's do ut minus uxx equals 0. Um, and we'll do it on x positive. And we'll do ux0 uh, fixed at 0. And we'll do u0t um, equal to 1. And so this is uh, the model for a, a contamination problem. So we imagine that we have some long, narrow channel. Uh, maybe it goes down a little ways like this. And right here, we are uh, releasing contaminant. And so let's see, this is. Um, so we're releasing contaminant um, at a steady rate here at x equals 0. And then it goes off towards uh, infinity off that way. And so we're pumping in effluent, and uh, we want to know how this stuff uh, diffuses out away from the source.
Okay, so that's the meaning of, of u0 t equals 1. Okay, so let's see. Um, <coughs> applying Laplace transforms. Uh, to this problem, we have uh, the PDE becomes S U X S minus U um, X zero. So this part is uh, our Laplace transform of U T, and then we have um, minus U X X. Um, and zero. And when we um, uh, transform our initial condition, we get an initial condition of u, uh, sorry, boundary condition. Uh, u zero s is one over s. So the Laplace transform of one is, is one over s. Uh, so this is, um, maybe I'll just make a note, this is the boundary condition. And this is the PDE. Well, okay, guess that was obvious. Actually, it's no longer a PDE, now it's an ODE in X. Um, so now we can solve it, so let's see. So, so this looks like uh, UXX equals um, SU. And you all know how to solve that. And you find out that uh, capital U looks like some arbitrary function of s times e to the uh, minus x root s plus b s e to the minus x root s. And you might be asking me, hey, um, how did you know to set it up with that basis of uh, oops, uh, positive and negative exponentials and not say, um, your usual favorite and write it as ax uh, cosh plus bs cinch. Um, and the answer is um, I didn't know to do that. In fact, I, I did it with cosh and cinch the first time and then it, it ended up being really awkward and I noticed that the author used the exponentials and that made things a lot nicer so I went back and I redid it because the, the way I did it stunk. So. Um, Sometimes it's just a matter of hindsight. Okay, so now looking at this uh, solution that we've got here, we're going back to, to the, the, the model of like what it is we're trying to solve for with this contaminant. Uh, you, it's physically plausible. Uh, you would expect it to be the case that the solution is bounded, right? You, you wouldn't think that the amount of effluent here is just gonna you know, um, explode with X, yeah? So, as a, so even though it's mathematically uh, possible to have this term right here, um, we're going to make uh, bs to 0, uh, or else we won't get a bounded solution. OK. Um, and then we need to figure out what a is, as is. So we use the uh, boundary condition, and we evaluate both sides of this equation when um, x equals 0, and we get 1 over s equals as e to the 0. So as is 1 over s. And we know now that our um, u is 1 over s e to the uh, minus x root s. Um, now we're ready to look at our handy dandy lookup table to see uh, so we want to find this in the table of Laplace transforms. Um, and so when we do that, we see that the uh, inverse Laplace transform, so somewhere in the right-hand column, we find 1 over s e to the uh, minus x root s. And um, it turns out that this is the complementary error function of x over square root 4 pi uh, t. And so complementary error function means 1 minus the error function. 
and the error function is this thing from statistics and probability that shows up and uh, a fair bit in this course as well, just in virtue of the fact that we keep on bumping into um, uh, this Gaussian distribution in the form of the heat kernel. Um, so this is this integral here. And it's the integral of e to the minus r squared dr. There's our Gaussian distribution from the heat kernel. So the idea is this one. Um, this, this Gaussian curve looks like some uh, bell curve like this. Um, so when you integrate this thing, you, you get something that, since it's picking up, uh, you know, a lot of area at the beginning, it's going to be rising fairly rapidly. And then by the time you get further on, uh, there's th it's going to be getting very little, so it levels out pretty quick. So it's going to go um, boom, and then level out, something like this. Um, <coughs> and because uh, this function has no elementary antiderivative, uh, you can't uh, compute this explicitly, so that we just symbolically call it the error function. Here we've got 1 minus the error function, so it's going to look like um, this one. And that's uh, sort of a plausible thing to expect for something with a, a concentration gradient here. So right, so here's where you're, we're maintaining it at height 1, and, and we're pumping the, the effluent into the system right here, so it's going to be up at height, uh, height 1. And then it's going to be dropping off. But now look what happens with uh, time. The time is in here. And so that's going to have the effect of dilating this function. So as, as time increases, we're going to go up and up. So this is what happens as um, as we increase t. So that's good. That looks like a phys physically plausible solution. And so now that we've solved this in the special case, we can consider um, what it would look like in general. Uh, so if we had the same initial condition of, of clear, pristine water, and um, now we dump um, at x equals 0, we dump in effluent at some non-constant rate, f of t. Well, then from this part of the problem, we know that we are going to have uh, uxs is going to be um, as e to the minus x root s. Uh, but this time with the boundary condition of u0 s equals capital F, because we transformed the, the boundary condition um, as well. Uh, then combining those, we see that um, now the solution is f e to the minus up x root s. Yeah? And so in order to figure out what the uh, solution is, we're going to have to invert the Laplace transform of f times e to the negative x root s. But this is a product. So this comes back as a convolution. And we already um, worked out that guy. So this is going to be s convolved with um, our complementary error function. Uh, oh, sorry. This one's actually slightly different because we don't have the 1 over s. So, so uh, we go back to the uh, uh, the Laplace, the table of Laplace transforms, and we find out that this one is actually x over square root four pi t cubed e to the minus x squared over four uh, t. Okay, 
And so then that's the thing that we're going to need to um, convolve against down here. And so the general form of the solution for this one is going to be the integral from 0 to t for our Laplace convolution, x over 4 pi t cubed in a square root. Whoa, that was a bonzo square root. OK, um, e to the minus x squared 4t uh, times f of t minus tau d tau. And then I just realized I've been writing t's instead of tau's. Sorry. Let me fix. Uh, yeah. There we go. All right. So there we have the general solution for this boundary value problem.